All right, in these segments, we're going to go into some issues that revolve around angles. Uh, we want to talk about the critical angle consideration when we're working with anchor straps or any element coming around an anchor or coming from two anchors. In those applications, we're looking at an interior angle between those connecting points and we're ensuring that it's narrow. So we want to close that gap up. We want to maximize workspace still, but we want to keep the gap closed. As that, that angle opens up, when we're looking at the element that's going around anchors or going from one anchor to another anchor, uh, you develop force multiplication. So even though you have a given load, when we expand the angle, each leg of the anchoring system can start carrying in excess of what the load is, uh, very quickly overloading your overall system. We're going to spend a little bit of time in here looking at that, as well as looking at the angles that we apply to directional anchors um, and how that plays into possibly overloading those anchors. Uh, then we'll head out into the field. We're going to look at it in some real applications within some training systems, with some guys moving rope around, opening up those angles, and we'll have dynos rigged in on directionals and on anchor hubs so that we, we can kind of see how some of these forces actually play out in the field within a real system so that it's not all lab and tool tech time in here. So as we start here, you can see in this application we're at roughly that 90 degree range. As a general rule of thumb, you'll consistently hear the term 90 to 120 within the rope world, uh, which references critical angle applications with high lines, with anchors, with anything where you're looking at an interior angle. As soon as we exceed um, or start getting into that 90 degree range on our interior opening, that's when we start uh, pushing past the envelope as far as what the actual anchor occurs. <clears throat> so for us, we really want to see things less than 90 degrees. As soon as we open this up further, we're seeing that. So we've just got some little fish scales in here. They're not super accurate, but they're going to paint the picture for us so we can see relatively how this all plays out. If I walk this in, to a more desirable or narrower angle that's roughly 60 degrees. I've got a 25 pound load plate here. I can see that on my base scales, I'm carrying roughly 12 and a half pounds on each one of these, which is evenly sharing that load. At 45 degrees, you should be in roughly that range where you're uh, equally distributing that load. As we exceed past that, we'll start pushing past that a little bit. This one here is right around 14 degrees. This isn't totally distributing center mass. As soon as I open this up, take this back to that 90 marker, and take this one back to that 90 marker, this scale immediately comes up into about the 16 pound range, and this scale here is in about the 17% range. So again, this isn't, I'm sorry, 17 pound range. Again, this isn't an exact angle, but you can see that we're awfully close to that 90 degrees, and on each leg we have not exceeded the load but we've exceeded the median of the load on each leg so in actuality even though this is a 25 pound plate the resultant force around this anchor through this anchoring system is in excess of what the load actually is just at 90 degrees if i were to open this up even further push this out towards more of what we consider um, traditionally a critical angle Now I'm really widening this out. <clears throat> uh, I'm way beyond that 90. I'm starting to approach that 120 range, somewhere in there. And on this leg, I'm above 20 pounds. And on this leg, I'm almost at 25 pounds. So right here, we can see how we start exceeding on each leg independently the actual load of the, of the, of the system. So, if we play that out realistically, here's some basic considerations to think about. More times than not in rope applications today, especially with the fire rescue service, we're utilizing anchor straps because they're quick, fast, easy, and functional. They're also um, very strong and the load designs or the working load limits are commensurate with what we're doing out in the field. If we're working with a 600 pound design load, or in theory that two person concept, a rescuer and a victim, Whatever comes into the system must come out of the system to be moved. So if I have a 600 pound load and I'm applying 600 pounds of force to that load to move that load, I'm in theory generating 1,200 pounds at that anchor. 
Most of your anchor straps will have a working load limit of 2,400 pounds when they're in a basket configuration. They'll typically be between 1,000 pounds and 1,200 pounds in the choker and vertical configurations. So if I've basketed an anchor um, and I've got 600 pounds coming into that anchor, as soon as I open this angle up to something in this arena, I am potentially carrying in excess of 1,200 pounds on each leg because that's force in, force out. That's 1,200 true pounds of force on the system. As soon as I exceed 1,200 pounds on each leg, I have theoretically exceeded my 2,400 pound capacity on that anchor strap. So that's how that portion plays out in the field. That's the interior critical, critical angles when working out or analyzing um, the anchoring elements that we're utilizing on that anchor. Now, there's a second consideration to this that works in the opposite facet, and that's the interior angles that we utilize within our systems when they apply to directional anchors. So if I rig in an anchor, I'm running my system and I need to redirect how my, my line lays out within that system. The wider my angle is coming in and out of that directional, the less force I'm going to generate on that directional anchor. The more I close that up, the more force I am applying to that directional anchor. There's a lot of relationships that, that cause that to occur. A lot of it has with the direction of pull, how much of it is in line with the load, as opposed to how much of it is extending out laterally, as well as the friction contact or the, the, the surface contact within the interior of the pulley, how much we're actually capturing when we are manipulating our system. So I'm gonna re-rig this real quick to illustrate that. We've got a simple pulley here. We're gonna use this fish scale right here. We're gonna drop this weight down. We're gonna run our rope through this. And then we're just gonna start playing with that angle to let you see how that directional approach is going to impact the load on this anchor. Now, this is also an interesting concept that we can kind of touch on here while we see this. Whenever you initiate your pull, you're always gonna peak out your system if you give it a sudden jerk. So you always wanna ease into your systematic progressions and your pulls. As I put force on this rope, I apply tension to the load, load starts to move. 25 pound plate, we said force in or load in and force out. So whatever comes into the pulley must come out of the pulley. I have 25 pounds here. Theoretically, it's gonna require 25 pounds of force to move this load. The resultant load on here is just about 50 pounds as soon as I let it stabilize, okay? Now, I'm gonna suspend the load. I'm not gonna let the load move anywhere but I'm gonna start opening this angle up. As I open this interior angle up, you can see that the force is applied to the anchor, start to decrease significantly. So even though we've sustained the load, it's still force in, force out. By opening up this angle, what we are applying to this directional anchor is decreasing significantly. Now it's down to that 50 pounds of force on the load we're approaching the 30, 32, and it can get less and less as I continue to open this up because of the nature of the lateral pull. So, two very, very critical theories to understand when you're rigging systems. Remember them as simplistically as that. It's not that you always have to have a dyno in and you always have to calculate. It's that you have to think about the loads you're dealing with, uh, the design loads, and then you have to think about which angles you're opening up and which angles you're closing. Remember that angles that have to do with anchoring elements. Uh, an anchor strap coming around a tree, two anchor straps connected to two objects, a floating anchor going between two anchors. Whatever that element is, those are the angles that we want to close up, okay? So that we're not overloading that anchor strap or that anchor system itself. <clears throat> when it comes to the forces applied to the anchor, and we don't want to overload the anchors and the elements going into that anchor, that's when we're looking at opening up as opposed to closing up the interior angles. So that'll do it for the lab in here. Um, and then we're gonna head out in the field. We're gonna get a bunch of shots uh, and talk through some key points about how it actually plays out in, in, the, in the rigging environment.
Okay, so we have two primary directionals that we're going to analyze the angle on and see what kind of forces we're generating. We see that I have a rescuer and a rescue Randy as the load. Uh, we've been consistently running close to the 500 pound, mid 500 pound range for that load. That top side directional is the one that we're going to go look at last, uh, see what the dyno is reading on that for peak force and consistent force in. Um, if you look at that angle, you can recognize as we pull out laterally here, that's a pretty tight angle. That's not opened up to the degree that we would like to try and minimize the forces on that angle. Additionally, the anchor strap running to that directional is in a vertical configuration. So it would be important to uh, identify the three load configurations for that anchor strap, vertical, choker, as well as basket, find out what your limitations were and rig that appropriately for what your projected uh, forces were that you were going to apply to that anchor. So we'll check that one last. As we trace the main lower hull line back, there's the other directional uh, rigged into a load distributing load sharing anchor system. We'll have to get up there and see whether they've got a fixed point on it or not. And then all the way back to the primary hub where they're lowering and hauling from. Haul lane in this range. So as we head back to this directional, Jerry's there at the dyno. We can check the dynamometer here. And we've got 500 and 770 for our peak. So we've got a much better angle here on this one than we do on the top side. As we look at this open angle, you can see we're nice and wide. This thing consistent with what the actual load is, not exceeding it. So not a lot of force multiplication going on there. So in this drill, these students are doing up downs with transitions. Uh, we're going to head up to the top side now, see what the dyno is at the top side. Okay, here we are at the top side of the system where the high side directional is. We're running a belay line, so we have the shortest direct route to the load. And then we can trace this assembly up here where we've got a basketed anchor sling rigged into a vertical configuration to get the appropriate length. Place that directional where is desired. We trace this out the window. There's our dyno rigged in at that high side directional. Scott, what's our consistent reading on this high side dy dyno bin? It's about 700 pounds. Okay, and what was your peak? Uh, 890 has been our peak. So you can see that we've loaded this much more so than the low side directional because of the narrow configuration of that angle. You can see from up here how wide that base angle is. So remember, when you're Contemplating the forces applied to your anchors uh, in regards to directionals. Always widen your angles up. The closer you get them, the greater the force you're going to apply to the anchor. The wider you make that opening on that interior angle, the less force you're going to apply to that anchor.